the Lusitania sank in just 18 minutes, beating Titanic. So let's get right into it. The ocean liner Lusitania was struck by a German torpedo in 1918 and sunk within sight of the Irish coast in just 18 minutes. Compare that to the rather luxurious sinking of the Titanic three years earlier in 1912 that lasted two hours and 40 minutes. We have all seen the popular Titanic movie, so just imagine our protagonists, Rose and Jack, having just 18 minutes to escape the sinking ship. In 1915, World War I was not even a year old in Europe. In response to Great Britain's naval blockade, Germany announced that it would begin unrestricted submarine warfare. In other words, U-boats would torpedo any ship in the Atlantic war zone. Brits and Americans boarded the Lusitania in New York City, had seen advertisements in New York City newspapers posted by the German embassy warning them of that risk. Quote, Vessels flying the flag of Great Britain or any of her allies are liable to destruction in the war zone, and travelers saying on their ships, do so at their own risk. End quote. Passengers ignored the warning, since surely Germany would not target a civilian ocean liner. Also, they were told by the Cunyard Line that with a top speed of 21 knots, far faster than any submarine, the Lusitania could easily outrun any German U-boat. Dubbed the Greyhound of the Seas, she had won the Blue Ribbon for fastest Atlantic crossing. With 1,275 passengers and 702 crew aboard, the RMS Lusitania left New York Harbor on May 1, 1915, bound for Liverpool, England. Unknown to her passengers, she also carried a large secret cargo of munitions and contraband destined for the British war effort. Tensions finally grew on board Lusitania once the Atlantic crossing neared its end and they entered British waters. They had good reason to be worried. German submarines had already sunk two steamers off the coast of Ireland that week. Nevertheless, the British Admiralty never sent a destroyer to escort Lusitania, not even one. Instead, they instructed Captain William Turner to avoid the Irish coast at top speed and in a zigzag pattern, making it difficult for any German U-boat to score a torpedo hit. But with visibility obscured by thick coastal fog and wanting to save on coal, Captain Turner reduced speed only to 15 knots. He sailed Lusitania in a straight line, just 11 miles off the South Irish coast, within sight of the Old Head Lighthouse. Turner was ignoring every one of the Admiralty's directives. Whether or not the captain's decisions was justified, it doomed his ship, the passengers, and the crew. For lurking beneath the Irish waters was German U-boat U-20, led by Captain Lieutenant Walter Schweiger. U-20 had already sank a few small vessels, and now, at two o'clock in the early afternoon, he spotted a four-stack ocean liner through his periscope. What a prize for the Kaiser, he thought. Knowing full well it contained hundreds of civilians, at 2.09 p.m. in the afternoon, Schweiger gave the order to load and fire a single torpedo at the ocean liner. He then watched anxiously through his periscope. At 2.10 p.m., Lusitania's lookout spotted a torpedo streaking rapidly towards them, underwater, with a white, frothy line in its wake. Torpedo off the starboard bow, they shouted to the bridge. But by that time, it was too late for the large ship to avoid it. The captain barked out orders, hard to starboard. The German torpedo struck the Lusitania on the starboard side between the midship and bow. The detonation sent a low rumble through the large ship. Passengers reacted with mild concern. After all, it could just be trouble with the ship's large steam engines. They continued their reading or their conversations. 
Thirty seconds later, however, a second, much larger explosion erupted from deep within the vessel's belly, sending out clouds of black smoke into the sky. The entire Lusitania immediately began to tilt to starboard. It was not a second torpedo, however. Captain Schweiger always maintained that he fired only one. The source of the second explosion is Lusitania's greatest mystery. What had caused it? The bridge crew discovered the Lusitania no longer responded to the ship's wheel. The captain ordered an immediate wireless SOS and to reverse all engines. When the engine room could not comply to his order, he knew they were finished. The ship's tilt to starboard continued to worsen. He immediately ordered all passengers to lifeboats. At 2.15 p.m., just four minutes later, electricity failed and the interior of the ship plunged into darkness. Unlike the Titanic, the Lusitania had enough lifeboats for everyone. However, with the decks tilting wildly, a manic chaos set in, with passengers racing to find life jackets and then lifeboats. One survivor described it like a swarm of mad bees without the queen. Parents were separated from children in the rush of bodies. The electric lifts stopped working, trapping people between decks. Water began rapidly flooding the lower decks faster than people could escape them. The hallways and staircases began jammed with humanity. Within just five minutes, the Lusitania's list was already 15 degrees to starboard, then 20, then 25 degrees. Crew members attempted to launch the lifeboats, but the tilt of the sinking ship made this nearly impossible. On the port side, many boats swung back over the deck rather than out to sea. Those, were that, those that were released over the railing splintered against the riveted hull on their way down or capsized completely, drowning all those inside. Things were no better on the starboard side. Those lifeboats that were released swung out far away from the railing, too far for people to board. Those that managed to reach the water overturned or went in nose first because of the sinking bow. Some flipped over, either in the air or when they hit the water, dumping screaming passengers into the frigid Irish Sea. When it became apparent the lifeboats were failing, passengers lucky enough to reach the deck jumped into the ocean with or without a life vest. On the starboard side, they began sliding down the steep decks into the churning water. Once in the sea, they fought to hold on to any piece of floating wreckage they could find. Most never had a chance. The ship's massive propellers at the stern began rising out of the water as the pointed bow sank beneath the sea. Once the bow went under, the sinking accelerated Further explosions blew below decks as cold water hit the red-hot boilers. On submarine U-20, Captain Schwager watched through his periscope and noted coolly the results in his log. Quote, the ship stops immediately and heels over to starboard quickly, immersing at the bow. Great confusion is rife on board. The boats are made ready and some lowered into the water. In connection therewith, great panic reigns. Some boats, full the capacity, are rushed from above, touch the water, with either stem or stern first, and flounder immediately. End quote. On board the Lusitania, Captain Turner ordered his men to abandon ship as well, and remained on the bridge until it too was submerged. He was somehow washed clear of the bow as the ship sank beneath him. He survived after spending three hours in the cold water atop a deck chair. He was pulled from the sea unconscious. At 2.28 p.m., within 18 minutes, the giant sh ship slid beneath the Irish Sea, leaving a bubbling, swirling, frothy whirlpool in its wake. 1,198 of the 1,924 aboard died including 128 Americans, 59 children, and 35 infants. 
Lusitania sank in a mere 90 meters, or 300 feet, of water. Captain Lieutenant Schweiger lowered his periscope and ordered his submarine back out to sea. He was later lauded as a war hero in Germany, and later died in 1917 when his U-boat hit a mine off the British coast. Rescue ships were dispatched from the Irish point port of Queenstown and arrived within two hours. They managed to pick up only 761 survivors. Some were in such a, such a state of shock, their hair began to turn gray and fall out. Local authorities set up makeshift morgues to handle the hundreds of floating corpses being collected on the sea. The killing of U.S. citizens enraged Americans. President Woodrow Wilson protested loudly, and public opinion in the United States began to turn against Germany. It would still be another two years, however, 1917, before the United States finally joined the Allies in the trenches of France. At a Board of Trade inquiry, Captain Turner, the Cunyard Line, and the Royal Navy were all absolved of any negligence. All blame was placed on the German government. So what had caused that mysterious second explosion? Lusitania had been carrying 173 tons of ammunition. The Germans maintained that this made her a legitimate target and caused the second explosion. The British continued to deny it. Robert Ballard, the discoverer of the wreck of the Titanic, explored the Lus Lusitania in 1993, hoping to finally solve that mystery. The sad wreck lies in just 290 feet of water on her starboard side, obscuring the area where the torpedo hit. Conspiracy theorists claim the Brits deliberately sank the ship to hasten America's entry into the war. Robert Ballard found no evidence of this, nor was there any evidence of an explosion in the hold where the munitions were stored. No boiler room explosion was reported by the surviving crew at the time that the torpedo hit. Robert Ballard concluded that the torpedo had ripped open a coal bunker, causing the second huge explosion. The blast ripped open a much larger hole in the torpedo and doomed the ship to its rapid death. So ended the life of the once proud Lusitania, grand rival of the Titanic in both size and tragedy. It sits today on the bottom of the murky coal sea within tantalizing sight of the coast of Ireland.